Welcome to our podcast. I Every week I interview an, uh, an artist to help kind of just like inspire aspiring artists to go full time. Basically, I, I interview a lot of artists like yourself who are, are full time already and we just kind of get the details behind it and ask you a bunch of questions. So if you could just start out by kind of telling everybody a little bit about who you are and where you're from and what you do. This is my first official live, actually. Um, I am Jenna Morello. I am a artist out of Brooklyn. I would say street artist, but now I'm inside doing all uh, inside stuff. And I just work and live out of Brooklyn. That's awesome. So how did you get into the art world? Did you take the college route? Did you just start painting one day? Like, how did, how did that happen? Um, I guess kind of, I come from a creative family. So I've always kind of painted and drawn and made things and then eventually in trying other outlets that ended up being the one that I probably should have stuck with from the beginning. Yeah. So, I mean, I've always been creative. I come from a creative family. My father's a graphic artist. My mother's a teacher. So it was always encouraged to be explored, but it was just one of those things from the start that I was drawn to. And then I just jumped around in mediums. I just always kind of like to make things. Yeah, for sure. I think a lot of people can resonate with that whole, like, like to make things. I like to make everything. Cakes, yeah. um, like craft projects, like literally anything. I, I My first thing is just wanting to make it. And yeah. you've, you've settled on this really interesting niche. Can you talk about what you're currently working on right now? Because you do some murals, but then you do a lot of sculpture resin. What it, What is it exactly? I love it. I, I jump around because I live in Brooklyn. So half the year by me, it's really cold. Yeah. So I'm used to like, you have to work inside because you can travel in the summer, but if in the winter, you kind of got to hunker down and work inside. Um, and I like to do different, a bunch of different mediums. So with my space, my studio is not huge. I, you know, kind of like to make smaller things. And that's just kind of what snowballed into what I'm currently doing because of the whole pandemic my winter just kind of got extended because in the winter I'll, I'll make things all winter then as soon as it gets warm again I'll begin to travel and go do murals but now with this it's kind of just like my winter carrying on so that's where this kind of evolved into making little things and I wanted to make them smaller just because getting supplies right now is a headache like Amazon's kind of a mess. I can't go to the art supply store. So I wanted to focus on making something small and that, that had a good price point for people if they wanted to buy it. So that's what brought me to what I am currently at. Very cool. So is it resin that you're working with? What is that? Yeah, a lot of what I work with is resin, the small sculptures and stuff like, look like here's one of the, the little lighters. Like these are, so yeah, this is, this is a resin, which is, it's basically just liquid plastic. Um, yeah. it's a, it's a two part thing that you mix, but you could do a lot of things with it. So, um, it's kind of shifted from what I used to do. I used to just do like resin pour overs and overlays, and then it evolved into actual sculptures and casting and filling them with things. So very cool. I, especially when I found you, it wasn't too long ago, but you were really heavy into doing your, uh, rose blocks basically yeah. you, you would fit. Can you just describe those a little bit for any of the podcast listeners? Uh, this will be in podcast later. Um, and just kind of like say how you got to that. Like how, how did you See? come with that? Sure. Yes. Oh my gosh. So, <laughs> so um, it was, it was a mistake actually. What I was trying to do was I was trying to sit one of these things inside flush and then when I went to go put it in the mold, it got buried and I had to dig it out. And I liked like the, ge the geometry of it. So I just kind of kept going with oh it. Oh my gosh, that is so cool. I mean, they're fun. They're, they're, they're are, tough because it's, it depends on how they settle. But are they, they real roses? Yeah. Yeah. They're all real roses. They were, yeah, they were fresh and then altered and then put into all this other stuff. Very cool. So you you have the rose, and then you paint the rose, and then you resin around it. Yeah, I have I have the rose, and then I cast that into its own block, and then I bury that into a cement separate mold after it's cured, and then I dig that out. But a lot of what I do, like you don't know if it's coming out. Do you know what I mean? Properly. Like there's so many fails, especially in set in like setting those roses, because think about it. I only have a couple centimeters of space on each side. 
So it's suspended in resin and doesn't touch any of those sides. So I have a lot, I'll show you, I have a lot of like scrap ones that ended up not, like I'll show you. Like this one's all right, but you see what I mean? Like this one's okay, but it was a little deep. Okay, Let me wait. show if I had a, oh, oh let, me, let me find like a fuck up for you. Okay, here, okay. here's a fuck up. So like one, it casted too dark. Oh so yeah. You can't see it. But you get an idea of how it has to sit within the mold. Very cool, though. So how, why did it go too dark? What, what's the chemistry behind that that made it mess up? I, I just think it's black. I think when, you wet, when anything you resin essentially is going to look like it's wet. So if you wet something that's black, it like, gets really black. So anything that I put in resin that's dark will lose all sorts of texture and get completely lost. Oh, like, wow. think about if you poured water on, like, a black, like, a dark black wood table. If you poured water on it, it would make it look totally smooth, and there would be no sort of texture to it. So the same thing applies for resin. So cool. That's so cool, though. You, even the mess-ups are kind of kind of cool in their own way. How many do you think fail? 50%? In the beginning? <laughs> um, maybe every one in four. But here's the thing, my fail and the general public's fail are very different. So I have friends that like, would gladly take them, but like, it doesn't sit right within myself, because I know it's a fail. But that's why my mother has a lot of pieces that were fails, but she doesn't even know the difference or think they're fails. <laughs> so I, I mean, a lot of my stuff, because I'm working with natural elements and because resin's a chemical and it heats up, so you don't know necessarily how it's going to change something. And it might not even change it right away. I could cast something and then say, there's a chemical reaction over time. It could turn later on. So I just kind of have to monitor and see like what, what the duration of it is over a certain period of time, even before I release it. Like I had a couple of those sitting before I released them just to see what they would look like after two weeks, three weeks. And then once I was confident that they were okay, then I released them. Oh, cool. So I, do you mean, uh, do you have problems with like the resin yellowing or what do you mean? Um, no, it's just because they're natural material. Like if you, a lot of my materials, some of them are fresh. So dried flowers are easy. All the moisture is removed out of them. But if I resin something that still has some kind of moisture in it, if it's not deep enough or if it's not coated enough, that moisture will be a perfect example right here. So this, you could say this was fresh. Okay. So okay. you see, then the, see that right there? So there was moisture in this, so it split. Because oh. this is done in layers, see? So there's a little bit of moisture in this, and because of it, it ended up splitting this. Okay, so yeah, so... You, you could see you, that? Yeah, you, and so you, you, you basically had, like, an epoxy mold, and it, and it just split, like, because of the moisture. No, this it. split... No, 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 it did it after... I had, I had already resined this. So I resined this, and then it was looked fine, and then a couple days later, what'll happen is then it'll split. So you don't really know. Like, resin, like... Concrete, I think, takes 28 days to fully harden. Resin isn't hardened for it, fully hardened for at least a week or two. Oh, wow. Dang, all, all the different things to jump through. The, yeah. Those are, those are things I don't even think about be, being a muralist or a painter. You know, just like how, how things scientifically work together in that way. Kind of yeah. Thing. I mean, it's not stuff you can Google, but it's definitely <laughs> stuff that over time, you know, I've learned. How to do, and they also use different resins. Like I use a slow curing resin. I use a fast curing resin. I can't do those rose blocks with a fast curing resin. They'll get completely buried in bubbles and you won't see them because it heats up too fast. So there's different, there's different materials for different things that you're trying to do. You should take a class. I know. I know. People <laughs> say that to me. Yeah, for sure. There's I mean, I, so I have no problem with telling people. Like if they ask me, I'm not that artist that isn't willing to share. So I have no problem if like friends or other people hit me up and want to know how to do it, then I gladly tell them. Yeah. Good. Okay. So uh, what was your job before being an artist? Like, have you always been an artist? Or what was the tipping point that took you into this full time, amazing creative career? I mean, I've always, I've always, yeah, I've always done it. But I don't know, I guess when something comes really naturally for you, you kind of think, of, of all the other things you're supposed I, I come from a very teacher oriented family. So like going to college, 
you know, getting an education was very drilled into my brain by my mother, um, which I wanted to fulfill for her. But I did. I went to a year of college. And when I got there, it was just kind of like, I don't know. I, they taught me how to stretch canvases, but it wasn't, I don't know. It wasn't maybe my brain works a little bit differently. I'm not really sure. Um, so I was a server. I worked at 4040 in Jay-Z's nightclub for a long time. And <laughs> what? Oh yeah, that's a, that's a different story. And then I, <laughs> and then I bartended, but I mean, nothing, no like serious careers. So I, and this, and an artist like full-time artist bills has probably been for like the last five years where yeah. I don't have to worry about anything else. That's amazing. That's so cool. So how many hours do you spend creating per day? I, I know it must vary, but what's, um, I probably, I just was telling some about, but I, I mean, I don't create 24 seven, but I am working. I work throughout the full day just because it's something that I like to do. So there's not really a set time. I mean, I'll get up, I get up pretty early. My dogs get up really early. So I've been getting up like six thirty seven. And what I do is I will cast stuff the night before. So I'll cast stuff and then I'll wake up in the morning and I'll pull whatever. If I resin, whatever, I put stuff in the mold and then I will, set stuff up like if i have to set whatever up for the day or if i'm working on commissions i will go run my dogs i will go work out i will come back and then for the rest of the day i will work on and off i'll take a break to run them at night feed them and then i come back and i'll cast stuff in the evenings well this is my schedule right now like while we're in all this and then i will cast stuff in the evenings and see how it looks in the morning so i mean it's a constant yeah it's a it's an all day kind of thing that's amazing. So how do you find buyers? I think that that's one of the, the biggest questions a lot of people who are trying to come into the art world, you know, face. They're like, how do you how do I find people to buy my art? And because I have no idea how to get, find people to buy sculptures. Is it the same as paintings and murals? Like, would you have to have a different angle? I don't know. I, I mean, I guess what works for me, I can't say will work for everybody. In the beginning of going into this, like you see galleries and they're all, you know, they sell paintings for a ton of money. And everything but here's the thing with galleries it's, it's one or the other so you you put stuff in galleries but then i wouldn't be able to release smaller stuff outside depending on the gallery that you work with um so then i just started to instead of shooting for super expensive pieces like the murals are but the smaller stuff like i like the idea of my friends and family being able to afford it it also satiates the itch to constantly make things for me. If I make some smaller stuff and put it within the price point of people, um, how you get the buyers, I think you just kind of build your following and eventually you'll attract, you know, certain people to certain things. But I don't, I think I'm different because I jump around so much. So I'll sell some things to some people. I'll sell some things to other people. The people that buy the rose blocks or maybe might be different than the people that are buying the lighters. Yeah. So, Cool. Yeah. Just you kind know, of, I don't, a little yeah. bit of everything. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Um, can you talk us through like your painting process specifically? Like, uh, do you have any methods or techniques that you've picked up through your years of experience painting murals? Murals? Um, yeah. I mean, there's all, there's all sorts. Methods in how I pick it or how I paint it or both. In, any kind of thing. In, any kind okay. of thing that you have picked up that really, you find that it's really helpful. Okay. Um, well, w I will travel to various cities and then usually get the wall there. Sometimes they send me a picture of the wall before. I kind of like to, I paint through phases. So I guess right now I'm in the flower phase, but I also like to paint something that's pretty site specific to the place. Um, just to maybe incorporate, cause I'm going to leave, but to incorporate the people that are going to stay there. I'm not really the artist. Like if I want to make a statement, I can make it with my inside work. Like you generally won't see me outside making political statements on massive walls just because I've, what I've learned is that people like something beautiful and it seems to lift up the community more than like going and bashing Trump. You know, you know so I just kind of, I kind of like to play nice when I go paint because I'll go paint in the Midwest, you know, so it's, you just, you want to play nice when you travel to these places, but I'll, get the wall. Um, usually I'll paint something yeah, that's specific, like an animal or a flowers. I just came from well, in, Me in November, I was in Mexico. So I did a big mural of like the a butterfly that's down there. And I like to just make it look appealing, obviously. So I just kind of like to paint, 
pretty things that people like, you know, so yeah. I can leave them with something when I go home. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> um, tips for that. You, you work, usually we work hand paint to spray paint. If I can fill it in, I mean, it depends on your budget. If I could fill it in with, with um, bucket paint first, if it's a larger wall, I'll do that to save cost. Like I was in Indiana okay. and we had a, the wall was about 80 feet and I used about nine gallons from a power, from a power sprayer on it, which was thousands of dollars less than it would be with spray paint. Yeah. And um, faster. <laughs> yeah. And faster. So you learn, you know, tips and tricks like that. Yeah. I love it. So, yeah. Okay. So you, you mix spray paint and like latex acrylics, basically. You can mix spray paint. Well, the well, one of the layer, I guess. Yeah. The main, depending on how you layer, you can't put, you can't put acrylic on oil. You can use like a house paint as a base. And then pending on the wall, one of my preferred brands is Montana. They have acrylic. Oh, so yeah. you can paint you can paint acrylic on acrylic. So you could put water and water on water, and water on oil, water and water on water, oil on oil, and you can put oil on water, but you can't put water on oil. Okay, got, so got it. it. So I can't paint an oil base with hand paint and then go over it in acrylic spray paint because it'll peel. Okay, well, what if I do like um, oil based spray paint? And then I go over it with a, like a, a latex acrylic. Is that is that a no no? No, that won't work. I mean, I it might I've fool. Done that. I was like, it oh, might. No. It might. It might. <laughs> I mean, it depends. It might fool you to think it works, and then it might peel in a while. A, yeah, yeah, or immediately. So I just kind of <laughs> like to. I just kind of like to stick to um, the general rules of that. Good. But I. But I've mixed and matched everything and had it fuck up and peel and everything. So. Okay. I mean, I get, it's, it's one of those things. Or sometimes you could force it and put a, a varnish over it and, like, call it a day. I mean, there's ways around it. But generally, no, I would not put water on top of uh, – oil on top of water. Good tip. You know, and it's funny because I knew that, that that saying, you can't you can't put oil on top of water. And I just did a spray-painted mural, and I, like, did um, – little highlights with uh, acrylic latex on the top and didn't even think about it. So I'm just going to go down there tomorrow and make sure it's okay. <laughs> I mean, did they beat up while you were painting? No, it was, well, it, it was on cement. So like the, 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 Might spray, be all right. the spray really soaked in. And so, and I waited a day and it just did like little stuff on the top. So yeah, it might be all right, but it's actually really glad you reminded me of that. <laughs> I mean, you might be all right. If it's a porous surface like concrete, then you might be fine for something I've learned the hard way for something like, like if it's a sheet metal, it's not, it'll peel. Okay. It'll come right off. But I mean, if, if you didn't see a problem with it, you might be fine. Okay. Well, let's hope. Uh, uh -huh. Is there anything you don't like to paint without? Yeah. Uh, the little banana caps. They're my preferred choice of cap. Banana caps. Okay. Fill me yeah, in. Yeah. I don't even think that I down. have them. Hold on. I'll go get one. Okay. J they're just my, they're my preferred. Uh, wait, hold on. These. What? So these, I, I mean, I think that's the, I don't know the official name. All right. Universal cap. So these are, my, these are my preferred, um, but that, that's because I paint kind of cross hatchy. I mean, I know people that blend that are big on blending and fading and all that. They'll use soft stuff, but my preferred perfect. Here's my preferred three caps. I use this one, which is the banana cap or the universal. The, cap? Yeah. The universal, this is the stock cap for most Montana black, uh, cans which Stop. is like my medium filling cap I guess and then if I'm really like throwing paint this is the the fat cap fat so this, cap yeah this will empty the can in like 10 seconds okay. 12 seconds really so if, if, yeah like if I'm really looking to fill stuff in I'm using this okay but I but I'm usually staying in this range right here okay where do you purchase these caps? Um, by me, I have a place called Lowbrow. Um, if I am traveling, well, I travel now with the bucket, but like if I'm traveling somewhere and they're paying for paint or they're having it for me, I ask to have these. But I, if not, I bring them regardless. Loop has a, Loop uh, paint has a cap that's similar that I like. 
but those are about the only two that I like. Uh, and there's a ton of different caps, but that's a lot of people prefer these ones. Okay. So what, like if, if I were to order some online, where would I, where would I get those? Do you know? Spray planet, probably spray Planet, Perfect. I'm, I'm pretty new into the whole spray paint thing. I've, I've done like, uh, latex acrylic murals a lot and I'm like just finding um that spray paint saves so much time yeah um you know what I use often and in the beginning I was like this kind of feels like cheating but now that I've like turned it a little bit and I use it in a bit of a different way transparents I mean they help me immensely because I'm not an old school like graffiti writer where I could do the shit that they could do with yeah. rust-oleum like I'm not that person so I came in the game with all the fancy tools. So now I know the fancy tools. So one of them is transparent. And it's basically like spray painting with a watercolor wash. But I mean, you could do some really great things with it. Often I sketch with it. I shade with it. You can do highlights with it. Like if I want to add a light highlight with a touch of transparent, as opposed to totally screwing it up and attempting yeah. to do it with white, because that happens often. Yeah. So in the beginning, I kind of use them as training wheels to get can control. Now I could go back and if I didn't have them, I can work without them, but I still love them. They're like, a, it's like a watered down wash. I am writing that down as well. Yeah, because I, I was just painting that, that mural and I was like, man, if I knew how to like do highlights with the spray can, I totally would because yeah, that white, it just goes on there and just covers everything. There's no or like highlight. Or even that whole mural behind you. You could have had that whole thing be in yellow and then just came along with one can of orange or one can of red and created all of that stuff with yeah. just one color yellow. Like if you, you could have painted the base yellow with hand paint and then come along with one can of transparent orange or red and done all of those highlights and everything and just tone it down. Ooh. It's amazing. Text me or DM me when you use it because it's really great. I definitely, definitely will. Thank you for that. <laughs> Okay. Um, are there any art lessons you've learned the hard way? Yeah, you got to put primer down first. <laughs> okay. If, and depending on things, but if you don't, if I've learned the hard way, I had to do a commission one time for, it was a curved piece of sheet metal. And oh. I just went ahead and I painted on it. And it was like in the beginning of spray painting. So I, there was probably like half an inch of spray paint on it. And then they wanted me to come back a couple of years later where I've now gotten better to, <laughs> to go paint. And I legit, I took oven cleaner and a chisel and just hours of just sitting there to chip it off. Cause I couldn't even, at that point I couldn't even paint over it. And then my father was like, well, yeah, cause you didn't use a primer. <laughs> it was, it was awful. It was, it took like four or five hours of just like, arc a lot like just digging with a with a chisel to get this stuff off it was awful so i'll never do that again so prime your stuff if your services if you intend on ever taking it off okay and and also just like maybe making it last longer too or um i mean this wasn't going anywhere okay. so this being i mean this not being primed this stuff adhered to it like nobody's business so yeah i mean it, spray paint all depends on on the elements like, even if you put a coating on them, if that stuff beats in the sun, like, eventually it'll all lighten up or come up. Some brands are just more saturated in pigment than others. Yeah, for sure. I, I'm, I'm loving your accent, by the way. It's so cool. <laughs> it's very, Why? Do you, think I, do you think I have a thick accent? It's, it's very, like, Brooklyn, basically. Oh. Sort of thing. Yeah. It's cool. <laughs> I did, like, the Jersey-Brooklyn, like, loop, so it's probably a mix of both. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, do you have a favorite past project? Um, mu uh, see, when it comes to murals, a lot of the time it's the full experience will be like, because my friends will be there and we'll be traveling. And it, it, so it's a whole, it gets tied in instead of it just being walls. You know what I mean? Like it's the, like the, the last one I really liked that I did. The, I liked how it came out. I liked the colors. I did like blue morpho blood, uh, butterflies in, guys, that's my dogs. I did blue morpho butterflies in um, Mexico, but I stole my dog from Mexico too. So I liked that trip. <laughs> okay. That's another story. Um, 
And then, yeah, like this summer I travel around with a group of friends and we went to Indiana. We go to, so that was fun. But that's fun collectively because of everything, if that's what you're talking about. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, any any of it, like the, the job, the, the, the experience, the, the actual painting, any, any of it? Yeah, my pa- my stature limitations on how long I like a painting is generally short. It's getting, <laughs> it's getting long, lo- it's getting better now that I'm, I'm getting better, but it's still really short. Like I like, a, I, I'll like something I paint. I mean, it could be days and I'll be over it or <laughs> weeks, months, but I mean, there's not a lot. I don't know. Cause I feel like everything is a progression, you know, a, and step from one thing to the next. So yeah. there's not a lot of work right now. Like I'll, there's pieces that I've done that I like, but not any that like, you know, are like a magnum opus. Like they're not like my, my one and done. Like I feel like I'll be able to make better ones. Yeah, for sure. I, I think a lot of people can uh, resonate with that as well. Like yeah. there are so many things that I'm like, people are like, Oh, I love that. I'm like, I did that in college. Like I, I shouldn't even have that up. Like, why? Oh, you like, don't even know. My family <laughs> loves to like hang up all the nonsense that I made <laughs> when I was younger. And every time I'm like, take it down. My mother's like, replace it. But I'm like, you <laughs> have like 15 pieces here. I'm like, I can't replace. I'm like, just get rid of it. If it was up to me, I would burn it. But there's so many people are like, you need to save this stuff. But I don't, there's if there's a limit like if it's the stuff I did when I was younger I'm okay with it now if it's the stuff I did in like that one year of college and whatever I'm not <laughs> far enough from it right now that I don't despise it so maybe in time when I get you know more disconnected from it I'll be okay but like there's a chunk of stuff that I won't even go near that that's so like funny. I'll get angry if you show it to me because it's just <laughs> it's just too much yeah because th- there there is like a gap where like you you can look at the stuff from your high school years and be like, oh yeah, that was a that wasn't even me, you know, that was just when I started off. And you can kind of laugh about it, but like things like a, just a couple years ago that you don't like, you're like, Mm-mm, no, don't. <laughs> like it's just it's too much a part of you. Oh, whoops. No, no, none of it. Yeah. <laughs> no, see. it might. It said I. Yeah, it just skipped. No. <laughs> uh, so, what are your future art plans and goals? What are you working right on right now? Do you have any mural projects coming up? Just waiting for us to be able to get out. Like, what? Yeah, I mean, I I did, and then this happened. So I don't <laughs> know. I have to do. There's a Hilton by me. I have to do a mural for them. Um, yeah, Ooh. there was a couple. There was a couple murals coming up in the summer because this is my traveling time. But I mean, the idea of getting on an airplane right now or going to an airport is pretty distant. I'm lucky that if like I really get stir crazy, I can go paint around where I live. Um, like I have a couple murals I can go cover up and just paint to go paint, which I probably will go do. But uh, as for mural jobs, everything obviously is on hold for right now. So I'm just keeping busy with like sculptures and inside stuff and smaller pieces. Yeah, for sure. So for for these mural jobs, do you have like like people like Hilton? Like, how are you making the connection to get in with them? Do they reach out to you? Are you like, hey, I want to do something for you? How does that usually work? No, usually I'm lucky enough that you, it's word of mouth at this point. The Hilton, I was actually painting for a beer garden in Jersey City on the water, and the woman was on her smoke break. This was two years ago. She was on her smoke break, and she said like, oh give me your card or something. And so I said, okay, didn't think anything of it. And then she ended up hitting me up a couple months ago being like, Hey, do you remember me? Like they're finally building that hotel. So I was like, okay, perfect. That's amazing. So there, 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 a bunch of them are like that. There's not really one set way. Um, I don't really hit people up unless I want to do it just to do it. Like that's how I'll find outside murals or in the beginning, that's how I found outside murals. I would find a wall and then contact people. But now I'm lucky enough that people will contact me, see my work, think it's something that'll work for a certain thing. And then they'll hit me up. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. That's amazing that you've, you've gotten to that point where work comes to you. It's, it's, and like in the, in the beginning, you're not really sure like where that turns, you know, like at first you're like, asking people to paint on walls like hey can I paint this for you can I do this and then at one point it just kind of twists and people are coming to you and it's just such a better feeling but I think you have to do that like I think like you have to like you can't just expect to show up like the wall that I would charge astronomically for is the same wall that I would go paint for free in my spare time you know what I mean so like you have to do it because you like to do it and then I think people see that and then they come to you. I also think I was lucky enough in the beginning to be stubborn that 
it's not that I only painted what I like to paint, but I painted what I knew would look good as opposed to them being like, paint me superheroes and anime and whatever. That's not my style. I can gear you towards someone or one of my friends gladly that does that, but you don't want me to do that, right? I would tell them, you don't want, I'm gonna charge you a lot of money for something that you can get cheaper and better somewhere else. You want, if you're hiring me, you want me to do what I do. And I am lucky enough at this point now that generally they let me, they, you know, they don't, they, they know my work ethic is hard though. Like no one's harder on me than myself. So it's not that I'm bullshitting them, but yeah, I'm, I'm lucky enough now that they, if you're hiring me, then you're hiring me because you like my work and you think it's going to add to something, not because you're trying to force me to do something that like, I'll do a collab or ideas. But yeah, if you're yeah. if you tell me paint the American flag, it's just not something I'm going to do. One, it's not my thing. Two, I don't want to go down that road. Three, I can have someone else do it for you. Yeah. So, for sure. you know, I love that. I love how you you really stick to your guns in that. And I think p people ask for what you put out, you know. And so if if artists are out there putting out, you know, superheroes and American flags and all that like people are just like oh she paints anything and I'm gonna be asked for that you know which is actually a lot of what I'm asked for people are like can you do this I'm like sure I'll try that I'm not really at the point where I've found my really signature style niche yet like you but I love your style. but in the beginning but in the beginning you have to do that in the beginning yeah. I was painting I was painting on glass at a friggin preschool you know, like for I would just say yes to anything because yeah. it was like I could at least I'm getting paid to paint on this preschool as opposed to going to a job I hate right now, even though I hate what I'm painting and I'm not even putting my name on it. <laughs> you need that stuff to then eventually get to the point where you can say, like, I don't, you know, I don't need to do this anymore. But you do. It's in the beginning. It's good to try a whole bunch of different stuff and be like, I suck at that. I suck doing that. Like, I'm good at this and you want me to do this. Like if I painted American flags, I could have a whole career because I live in Brooklyn. How many auto places or, you know, delis want a flag on the side? But I just can't. I, for myself, I would go nuts. I can't get into that. I love it. Sticking to your guns with your niche. Yeah. <laughs> so good. So I have one more question here and then I will let you go. Uh, is there any advice you would give artists who want to make art their full-time career but just don't know where to start? We have a lot of podcast listeners and just followers in general that are just kind of in that tipping point of not really at full-time yet, but they want to be, but they're just like, where do I start with this? I mean, I, get, I think it's different for everybody. I think it's a combination of luck and talent and other stuff, but I really, the the cliche thing of like you have to have a passion for it I think you have to have like you have to want to do this whether you are getting paid to or not like morning noon and night because yeah you're going to be painting preschool glass windows you know what I mean at a point and if you don't go home like and really are driven by this then I don't think it's going to last I think if you do that then eventually it'll congeal what your path is what you like to do you know, others so eventually I think you'll kind of click into place. And then once you're in there, I think the name of the game is just trying to be better for yourself and not be bored with yourself. You know, like yeah. I could, I could paint American flags all day, but that doesn't do anything for me. Yeah. You know, like I'll go home and just be completely, you know, it won't do anything for like satiating that urge within me. So you think you just really have to find what you like and like, don't, I look at Instagram, it's great, but I feel like some people get consumed and like, oh, everybody's doing this, now I'm gonna go do this too. Like every, like even resin, I have a weird thing with resin because so many people use resin, but like you'll see they, they kind of half-ass it. Like if you're gonna do something, I think you should do it well and do it for yourself. And then things hopefully, you know, will fall into place. I love it. I, I think that's the tough love that everybody needs to hear, honestly. You're like, just do it, do it right, and suck it yeah. up. And just, yeah, you know, like, do I it. don't think you should half ass things. Like, yeah, all my art <laughs> sucked in the beginning, too. But, yeah. like, I kept trying. Like, I didn't, you know, some of these people, they paint a mural in an hour and a half, and it looks like they painted a mural in an hour and a half. You know what I mean? People can see that. So, if I'm painting an hour and a half mural every day, it's like, okay, you're, you're, you have a lot of content, but there's no quality to it. I think if you put quality into it, like real will recognize real and then they will be drawn to it. That's so true. Real, real will recognize real. And people are going to ask you for what you're putting out anyway. If you're putting out half-assed stuff, 
that people are going to ask you for that level yeah. and, and that price point and expect that. However, if you're taking the time to put out amazing, amazing things, then people are going to ask for amazing and they're going to pay for it too. Cause they're going to appreciate it. Yeah. No, eventually. I mean, it's tough. It's definitely tough. There's definitely a point where you're like sink or swim and you don't know if you're, you know, people are gonna, but if you stick to that uh, for me, if you stick to that long enough, eventually there will be a breakthrough and you can kind of, you know, you're the captain of your own ship and then you can call the shots. But you have to go through like the shitty years of making nonsense just so to true. be able to deserve this now. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to quote that. You have to go through the shitty years of making nonsense. You do. <laughs> Embrace the suck. <laughs> I, have, I have made some nonsense. I promise you. Me too. Yeah. Uh, I used to do a lot of dog portraits and just hated it. And then finally I was like, okay, no more. <laughs> like I just yeah. don't do it anymore, but yeah. I did it for a while. Cause like yeah. doing, doing something is better than doing nothing. A hundred percent. And that's how I always used to look at it. It's, it's, it's better than me not doing it. So whatever part of this brain that it's keeping active right now. Yeah. Dog portraits, like yeah, oh, everything. Even that, that fucking awful job of, of this daycare and then other daycares wanted it. And painting on glass also meant when I had to turn it over, I had to take it off. So I was blatantly spray painting on glass and then using oven cleaner, which I'm sure is not the <laughs> professional method to take it off. So I was just making every, and I make up a, I made up a whole lot of things too. But then eventually like uh, from a thousand mistakes, I started to learn something. So it was all right. Yeah. Everything turns out all right anyway. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. Well, thank you so much. This is the mic drop point. I, I loved everything about it, especially this last part. I think it's so inspirational and just the, 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 the kick in the butt, the, the, the kick in the butt yeah. that I think a lot of people need to. So yeah, just keep thank at you for it. That. Yeah. Thank you. It was very nice meeting you. Yeah, you too. I will keep in touch. Uh, this podcast will come out in a week from today and I'll send you all the links and everything. So awesome. thanks again. I'll awesome. Talk to you later. When, and when you try transparency, let me know how it goes. I will. I definitely will. <laughs> okay. I'll talk to you later. See ya.